What's up, our maiden? This is myself, Build. And over the next couple of weeks, I've got some mammoth tasks that I need to tackle that I'm not quite sure I'm ready for. I've got loads of twin wall land drain, which I will be installing around the perimeter of the whole building, right at the bottom. Here's my big roll of geotextile. At the end of the next week, there will be 30 ton of pea shingle there. That's all my drainage pipes, soil pipes, all the connection just there. Here's all my inspection chambers. I've got my water and electric cable ducked in. And in a few days time, I'll have a couple of grand's worth of tanking product. That's to deal with this mess here. Got a load of blocks coming, a load of ballast and a load of cement to build a new retaining wall there or a partial one. And this needs to come down slightly so it's safe and it doesn't fall on us. So strap yourself in and get yourself ready for part three in a bit where we actually fit the French drains. Ah, uh, you didn't see me then, did you? I was there that whole time. Right, we got loads of water because it fucked it down last night. That needs to come out and we was going to quickly pump it, but Dan suggested, why don't we just pull the rest of the French drain to where it's going to be going. It'll just make it easy and we'll take that water out. So we've marked out this here. So because of the overspill on the foundation, we need to kick it where Dan is, 30 degrees there. And then we're going to run it down here. So this is all going to be land drain still. Come all the way down. We're going to kick it at 45 here still land drain that's to cover basically this back wall because it does get obviously the water comes up to there and floods so i want to cover the garden basically within two and a half meters of the french drain it will cover it then it's going to kick 30 degrees there and then here i'm going to build a silt trap and then from there it's going to go into that manhole and across this pipe is going to cover the rest of the drainage dan's jumping in the big digger i need to go and get some fuel because the little diggers run out and I'm low on my dumper as well. And then we'll be, when I get back, I'll explain a bit more about what's happening. Okay, so this is where the land drain's gonna start. I'm gonna have two runs, one that goes that way, around that side of the building, and one that goes that way, around that side of the building. I'm having sweeping radius bends with clean outs at the top. <clears throat> it's gonna run all the way around. The trenches, they start at zero on the foundation there, and then they drop below, so it's all graded. So land drain's recommended fall is anywhere between one in 100 and one in 200. So we're aiming for somewhere in the middle, around the building anyway, um, over that section over there, it might be a little bit steeper. So I've just broke through over here, which is taking out the water around the side. So that's running. There. Um, obviously I, I could take that a little bit out, but I don't want to overwhelmed Dan because he's just doing the last bit over there. So once he's broken through there the water can come into here and there's still a hole in this so it will drain away still. Um, I might have to jet that afterwards. But this was the worst area and the water's pretty much gone from there like how we already automatically graded it. We're just going to make sure that it falls nice. It's good to have a bit of water in there when we're doing it because we know that it's actually flowing. 
So this is the lowest point, so it's going to come down there and round there. It's going to join here. I'm going to have the land drain continue on over to there, and then I'm going to build a silt trap out of them engineering bricks over there, and then run it into that manhole behind the um, shitter. <laughs> So normally uh, French drains about a metre off your property depending on where your foundation sits so you don't undermine it. This is effectively what they call over the pond a tile drain I think it is. Um, I've done a little bit of research, there's plenty of stuff on YouTube lucky enough. So this is the solution that I'm going to go for. So I haven't got many viewers over there, I know Will's one of them, he, he was actually suggest doing this. Um, after I'd, I'd already planned it and figured out what to do anyway, but it's, it's nice to have confirmation that that's what should be done. Obviously over in America they do it because they've got basements and like, but this isn't a basement underneath, it's just to make sure that I don't float my block and bean floor basically. So this is my twin wall pipe, it's 100 mil. So it's basically got a wall inside and a wall on the outside. The land drain stuff that's flexible, it's not as strong. And I just thought, well, if I'm doing it once, well, if I'm doing it now, I'm doing it once and I'm doing it right, because I don't want to end up digging around the house again. So this is the stuff that I'm using. And the handy thing with this is that I can use the normal underground push fittings on the end, like these. So this is what I'll be using to go around the corners because it's a bit more sweeping. This is what you normally put at the bottom of your stack. That's why it's got that little foot there. But that's got a nice radius on it so if we ever need to jet it or rod it then we can. So those of you who know me you know that I don't have a trader to have a go, I'm a proper DIY self builder and when it comes down to it the building inspector nor the structural warranty inspector pulled me on this issue. I'm totally doing this off, off my own back for my own reassurance. I was meant to have land drains about but nothing to the extent that I'm doing this. I think it's the right thing to do, so that, that's what I'm doing. Um, obviously I'll take pictures for the structural warranty bloke just in case, well, it's all on, it's all on YouTube, isn't it? So in terms of having it maintainable, it's just belt and braces and makes it a bit more reassuring. I've already done the tank in, that video is up here if you haven't already seen it. Now, for the very ends of the pipe, I'm doing sweeping radius, like I said before. That's going to go all the way up to the top. It's about a metre deep. I'm going to cap it off with this, and that's going to sit on top, so that will be unscrewed and jetted if I need to, and it's going to get around that bend easier. I've already showed you the corners, so that should be all right. And then strategically, here and there, I'm going to put these in, and that's going to be a 45 up to the surface, where I can put these little things and that's going to be my rod in point so it will run like that. So if it goes around maybe two corners I'm going to put one of these in so it's easy access because I don't want to end up with a situation where you start rodding from the very ends and you can't get all the way around or something but jetting that should be a lot easier and we'll all be good. So researching this information, I found that it's probably best not to wrap the pipe directly uh, like a sock, like I did with the other one. And it's best to do what's called a burrito. So you get the uh, geotextile non-woven fabric. I've gone for a heavy duty one. So I think that's uh, 100 GSM. That's what you normally line driveways with, I think, or um, big soakaways. So I've just got the biggest size that I could that was most uh, cost effective and I'm just going to chop it. We're going to roll it into like a big burrito all the way around the gravel and this. So we'll lay some gravel in, we'll lay the pipe, more gravel, more of this, more gravel and like it will just be a big, big drain basically at the bottom of the foundation. It's um. The bloke that dropped off the gravel, he said, what are you using this for? And I said, I'm doing like French or land drains. And he said, oh, like he would have used 20 to 40 mil gravel. I've gone for 10 mil. Well, I know he's old school. So he basically puts in land drains, puts 40 mil pipe and no fabric, no access points, nothing. Just like slap it in basically. He said that his house is block and beam 
and he's got water under it and he said I'm surprised I'd be surprised if there's any houses that have got block and beam floors if they haven't got water underneath and so mine is going to be one of them Just to make sure everything's going to be graded correctly, even though we can kind of work it out from the water that's still coming out, I'm going to use the level. So, standard procedure. This is 1.8 meters long, so I need it anywhere between 1 in 100 and 1 in 200. So you get 1800 in millimeters. Divide that by 200 equals 9 millimeters. So, or 1800 divided by 100 is obviously 18. So I need a difference between that end and this end, anywhere between 9 and 18 mil. So if I put on nine here, that bubble now touches that line, the first line. If I put on 18, that bubble is touching, almost touching the second line. So I'm just gonna use the level, make sure it's always touching anywhere between the first line and second line, we get the correct fall. Okay, we are roughly graded out. We've got rid of the slot round this side. I'm gonna do a light layer of gravel, just to do that last bit of grading. Can you hear that thunder? <laughs> and, um, and then we can lay the fabric in and then the pipe. We're gonna try and do this side before the rain chucks it down. Can you see the black clouds in the background? It's, it's really light over there. Oh, so yeah, it's, it's all good. Uh, we've got most of the slop down to that corner. So it's easier to get the slop out and then put a little bit of fresh stuff in and do it that way. So yeah, onto the gravel. Dan's just pulling over the small digger because uh, it's just easier. We'll fill out the barra and just chuck it over it. Bitch. It chucked it down. We, we we battled on, but then then we just decided to stop and then have a cup of tea, and then it stopped raining. We've had a couple of little craps in, just down there. I'm just going to jump in and get that bit out, and then uh, and carry on shingling up. Right, that's all gravelled up, and kind of graded. You see it. Uh, most of the water has already come out. Uh, the, <laughs> the pipe got blocked with a load of silt, um, so we have to try and sort that out. I, I'm going to buy a jetting kit and do it later properly. But it's, uh, it's about a third blocked, I'd say. We're going to cut this uh, fabric. Yeah, it's four and a half meters, so we're doing two and a half. We'll try to cut it with a handsaw. It's four and a half meters, we do two and a half, and then the two meter roll we can use on the other side. It's, it'll just be too long and too flappy. Okay, action plan is to go up either side, so that's why I've done two and a half meters. And we're gonna pin it in with these into the earth. That's what you use on the insulated um, decks for a warm roof. So I had them left over and we propped up the roll so we can pull it out. We'll do it in sections but we'll overlap the corners. Right, we got the first bit in. I couldn't really film it because it's really awkward, like it's the higher bit. Maybe I'll be able to show you on the other side, but um, I'll just quickly give you a quick peek. So I've used them now things to attach the fabric to the edge. We put um, 
the pipe in next, make sure it was basically graded and then we put in the actual gravel. Um, like I said, these are the fittings around the corner. So that's going to be my first clean out pipe. So there's going to be one running that way and then the other one will run that way. So it's clean out and then hopefully these bends, they take it round. They're not too harsh. And then I've taken it up to here. I'm putting the other rod in point there. And then I'll probably put one round there as well. So I'm just doing it every now and then just to make sure that I can jet it out or anything if I ever need to. Uh, I reckon we're probably gonna go about two, so 300 mil gravel on top of the pipe then we'll wrap it and then we'll put some more gravel on top and then I was going to backfill it just with like the soil etc Dan said it would be a shame not to be able to utilize it for the drive as well so to, in order to do that we'd need gravel against the actual wall as well so we, we're gonna we'll have a go I'm not sure it'll work we're going to put in a board then backfill it with mud and behind the board we'll leave like a gap so we'll space it off the wall and then we'll put gravel in and then we can pull the board out i'm not sure how that's going to really work or whether it's going to like well i'm not uh, yeah i don't think it'll work anyway but um we can see I'm, I'm quite prepared to like this is just basically for the groundwater and I probably end up putting the ACO drains in as well, so I'm, I'm fine with that. For those of you who don't know, that's my neighbour's pond slash soak away over there. So the water goes down here, goes in there, and then it still needs to come through the ground all across here. It's not necessarily that it's got a high water table. It's, uh, it's because of the soil makeup in terms of clay you get what's called a perched water tables which is higher than a normal water table i know that i've definitely got one that comes through here and that's the reason why i put in the french drain to stop it affecting the cart lodge really but um i didn't want it affecting the house cart lodge just doesn't really matter as much in terms of like if there's a little bit of water underneath that block and bean there won't be because i put in that french drain but I definitely don't want it lifting that floor. So I reckon that this is like, this is going to do the job and uh, should be all good. Right, I'm starving now. Dan's, Dan's gone. Um, he's, I've only got him tomorrow, so hopefully we'll be able to get the drainage all the way around and then I'm going to be struggling to backfill it by myself probably, but it's just life, isn't it? See ya tomorrow. Right, uh, it absolutely chucked it down last night like you would not believe for a very, very, very long time. Um, everything's kind of okay. It has collapsed a little bit down here. It's not the end of the world. That brandy is a little bit worse. Um, just down here. What, what a bitch, eh? So we're gonna have to dig that out. Dan said, right, before we start digging it out, let's just get this wrapped up and done um, before it collapses again. So we need to get all the shingle in. So I'm gonna jump in the big digger and we'll just do it with buckets and just do one section at a time. Um, I'm gonna change this because this is like a rodding point, whereas I only need a jetting point because I've looked up the jetting kit that I'm gonna get. So I'm gonna kick that so it goes up that way we're not going to change that fitting or it's already down there because it's already done we'll kick it up there another little change of plan as well so i was going to put a silt trap there i was going to actually build one but the the water's coming down and i don't think i'll generally have enough time to actually build that and get it all done before loads of water comes down so i'm just going to buy one now i'm going to only i'm going to get a small one it's only 250 mil and then I can just drop it in and it doesn't matter if it's raining or anything because I can just connect it up. Lucky enough, this has kind of worked. The amount of rain that come down last night, this would have been like a proper moat, but everything's drained away. 
There's a little section here, but that's a little bit low there. Yeah, all that water would have been in the house before, but now it's not. Yeah, I don't know whether I'm making this look easier than it is. Obviously, I've not been recording the bits where we've been down the old digging and everything, but I can't film everything. Right, I'm going to swap that bucket over, I'll get the digger. Yeah. Let's get rid of this fucking wire as well. Holding that over over that side, then put the 200 mil on top of there. getting there I've put another clean out there that'll be within the decking and then over here I have fitted a gully into it um, I am doing my rainwater separate but I mean look that's how much rain is gonna come off that so I need still need to have a damp pipe might as well just go into there don't even really need to do it because it will go in there anyway but we'll just whack it in so yeah, I think it's about half one. So we've got a few more hours. Hopefully we'll be able to get the other pipe in around that side. And then uh, we didn't really think about getting the gravel down there, did we? Well, that's going to be a struggle and a half, isn't it? And up the top edge. It's just inaccessible. If you're ever going to buy a place, just get a barn in the middle of the field with nothing around it, no trees, nothing, just an empty, flat field. Okay, that's one side down, all done, all back field. We've gone about two to 250 on top of the perforated pipe. Then we wrapped it in the burrito and then we put another 100 mil on top. So I've got one, two, three clean outs. Um, and I've also got this gully that's going in. That's roddable as well. I, you can have it as a clean out. We've stopped here. We need to do the other side. Um, we're just having a little bit of a debate with Dan. Not, not really sure what to do, but he said, why don't you just run all of the roof into there? Because I can run that gully into that clean out. And the other gullies into the other clean outs as well but i said like i don't know like is, is that just going to force water down there into the foundation i think it might he said well just run it just put solid pipe on top it's not that much of a difference is it so i might do that because it's all exposed anyway so i've got enough pipe work I'll just sit it on there build it up make sure it's got a runoff we'll sit it in a trench and then maybe maybe i'll combine it down there or something no i can stick it on top i'll do it separate i think i'll do it separate what would you do what would you do right try and get as much as the other side as we can done now and I'll see you later. Back on my own and yesterday was pretty much a non-event day. As you can guess, it's just like, it's <laughs> when you're on your own, I'd, I needed to have a bit of a, 
I need to slow down a little bit and just figure stuff out exactly what I'm going to be doing. I've done a few bits, but not much. Uh, I cracked out this overspill foundation because I need to figure out exactly where the pipes are going down here in terms of the soil pipes and the land drain because I don't want to obviously get them in the wrong place. Um, this was all piled up so it was inaccessible so I pulled the little digger down here and flattened that off so I will actually need to wait make this wider. Um, oh you fuck off. Right. That probably needs to come in a little bit more. And then uh, I've just knocked up Dan's idea. Okay, so this is what I think he was saying. I didn't really ask him, I just went, oh yeah, okay. Um, he probably would have done full boards, but I just know it would have been impossible to deal with. So the plan is to backfill this on this side of the board and then I'll chuck gravel behind and then I'll pull the boards up more and then do the same process until I get to the top. I want to get rid of this into there. So it's almost backfilled. I might obviously need to get some soil from elsewhere. I also need to cut a nice line down here with the petrol saw. Backfill this to a certain level so I can do my other drainage. And then I need to take out this slab here. So I'm going to get the pecker on that. The sooner I get that main stuff out of the way in terms of like using the big digger, pecking, backfilling, like the bulk of it. I can then take it, well, get the higher place to pick it back up because I've, I would have had it almost two weeks. So I don't want to keep it for three weeks. I'll keep the li little digger. I also need to crack this out as well, this corner. Um, but that's for part four. Yeah, juggling, juggling. It's, uh, it's hard to know what to do without messing yourself up for the next step. Um, right, I'm going to pull the digger over, we'll see how this goes. Okay, so I've got about halfway, I've put a couple of screws in the end. Now, in theory, this will reduce the hydrostatic pressure against the building and also it will save me putting in eco drains but i don't think that's going to be the case um yeah do you reckon i'll be able to lift this i might have to do it with a digger but we'll see So this is relevant as parts three and four, so it's going in both. I need to put the land drain down here as well as the soil pipes. So there's one soil pipe coming out there, one soil pipe coming out there. Land drains up there, finished about, the bottom of the pipe is 120 mil below the top of the foundation there. This one down here is 270 mil below the top of the foundation. So I need to work out exactly where this land drain's gonna finish in comparison to the actual soil pipe. I want any excess water to go through the land drain. So if you can imagine, obviously if, if I've done a land drain that's there and then I've got all of my gravel, if I then try and put in a soil pipe, which is lower, any water that comes down it's gonna end up here and it's not gonna go through the actual 
land drain here and then it will collect around here and it won't go anywhere until it fills up to there now I don't want to collect water around this general area I want it to be as far away from the property as possible I need to get this bit out and all of this slop and then make sure it's generally graded down there and then I'll be doing my burrito another late start normally when I get to this point I know it's probably time to go home for a few days but I can't because I've still got this on higher so I'm going to utilize it I need to do some gravel down there just to get the gradient going before I put the fabric in and the trouble with that is I've got ditches here there and everywhere so there's four ditches to get across um, and I want to use that to basically fill the wheelbarrow with gravel because it's just easier it's 12 shovels physically doing it or just one bucket basically or one and a half bucket I can't get this across the tracks are too small so I'm gonna get my ramps up and see whether, whether that works Whoa. <laughs> we made it. that's down it's generally graded close enough and now I can lay the fabric down and put my pipe in but before I do that I need to sort this bit out here so that's slightly too far out so I want to take about 60 mil off cut it back and then that one can line straight down where I want it so hopefully I can get this off quite easily Uh, you can cut this with a saw, but because it's down here, I'm just going to use a multi tool. So, get yourself a big pot of lube. This is like almost like jelly. And just put as much as you bloody can on, because otherwise, it's not going to go well. And we're going to put it on both parts.
Yeah. 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 So these double walled pipes come with a coupling at one end and then blank the other. So with these type of pipes you can just push it on. I, I don't think I've explained before but they've got little slits all the way around. So it's going to let water in from the top, from the bottom, from the sides, anything. So this one's a little bit cracked so I'm just going to put a cable tie around that. It just literally slides on. It's not super tight or anything but it's just to generally direct the water bearing in mind obviously there's got loads of holes around this anyway so it doesn't really matter so i'm going to do that there the reason why i've got a short piece is because i've got one clean out at that corner and then here i'm going to have another clean out just in case okay for this clean out we're going for the angled one because i've got the angled ones um, i couldn't find the straight ones before so but this would be fine. Mike Fiber Cloth, one of my favourite things that you will always need on a building site. Okay, so we're going to go in there. So this is the angle 45. This is a rodding point, but I'm just going to jet this. Uh, it won't need rodding. We just jet. So that's going to go on there, that's going to go on there. This is going to go on here like that. So I'm going to finish it a little bit higher than it needs to be. And the reason why I've gone for the twin walled drain, land drain, instead of the single wall, is because um, it's, it's stronger and it, it won't ever collapse. So it's strong like a bear. Easy. Go on. Yeah. Out of here. Yeah. Ow. Right, it's over one ring. That's pretty much enough, but we'll try and go for two. So that's there. Uh, that's been clean out. I've put this little extra bit on here. Now I can put the long one with the coupling on this side. So there we go, it's pretty easy with this, this size pipe, everything slides in nice. Uh, you can use the other fittings for your normal saw pipes. I got loads of fittings anyway, just in case. So I'm gonna backfill that a little bit with a little bit of gravel just around the edge, just to hold it in place. Then I will check the uh, fall. And if it's correct, then I can put in more gravel and then I'll do the burrito and then after I've done that, I'll get all the way down there, make sure it's going to connect, and then I can run in my saw pipe, which is in part four. Uh, if you're interested in seeing that, then make sure you subscribe, and next week it will be out. Uh, my silk trap's supposed to be here tomorrow. I was thinking it has been nice weather this week. I probably did have time to build something over there, but I'm not Superman. I can't do everything that quickly. And I've been doing this for almost three weeks now, so <laughs> I've had enough. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll check in tomorrow, you can see what's happening. Uh, Dan's here. Hopefully we'll get this land drain cracked out, and the drainage as well. The soil pipes. Mm. See you then. This is going in part three and a half and four, so sorry if you say it twice, but obviously I'm doing both at the same time. We've decided to cover them up sole reason being is because if we leave it partially exposed the pipes were quite easy to like just move if you walk up and down and then they just go out of full it's just, and it wasn't good i got very stressed because I, I ended up setting the sole pipe and then i ended up pulling the french drain out of it's full so yeah I was going to leave it exposed for a building inspector to check. But I'd right, I'd take pictures of this side. I'll leave the other side open. This this would be a piece of piss if you was doing one on its own, in its own trench, easy. Two next to each other, nightmare. Look at that. They're finished exactly at the same level, considering 
they started at the same over there and both sides of the building they're at different lengths I've done well to meet up where it is but I haven't got the connector because that stupid bloody company haven't delivered it today I knew that that was gonna happen I don't know why I trusted that they would actually deliver it today so land drain finishing won't be for another couple of days I reckon maybe even Monday so I've got the weekends what day is it it's Friday yeah Friday Sunday, Sunday. Right, let's do an update. It's the 5th of November, Friday the 5th of November. <laughs> I've been here for four weeks straight now. Um, been doing this whole mammoth task project for three and a half. The past week, I've been down to half days because I'm just, I don't want to do it anymore. I'm, I'm tired. Still bloody here, still bloody here. <laughs> uh, Lou come up for the weekend, we had the weekend off um, and I'm back to doing the French drain. I've done all my soil pipes, that one's all done and dusted. I just need to do a bit of backfilling, but I need to finish off this French drain. I've covered over that section and I've put a clean out there and now I need to connect it to this other one that's coming out here. And then it needs to come down here and then I will put my silt trap on and then I'm going to leave it there. So yeah, I need to do a few bits here. So I need to add another bit to there. I'm going to use this to connect this one to this one and then it needs to run across here. Now in order to do that, obviously that's got shingled rounds the soil pipe. So I need to put a bed of soil or clay across here so it doesn't soak through and then bank that up as well. So it will stop any water that comes around the house just going down there straight over to the water sewage treatment plant and then floating the treatment plant out of the ground. So I need to do that and get all that in and then I need to dig this out again by hand and then lay everything in and do all the gravel. I filled up three barrels worth of gravel just in case because the higher place that this has actually come through I got text earlier saying they was picking it up today. Um, I was going to call them early, well later anyway and say I'm done with it and then get them to pick it up tomorrow. I haven't really been using it properly. I've just been using it just because it's just, I mean it's only like 180 quid a week or something so that's cheaper than hiring a labour to what's it, just, I, I, my body's broken. <laughs> don't know I just couldn't do this all of the time like as a groundwork worker like labourer it's just horrible but I don't think I've been eating enough protein or something so my muscles are not like recovering I'm I'm broken absolutely broken so I filled up them just in case I've cleaned down the digger if they do come pick it up then whatever I mean I didn't I haven't used it really at all over the past week <sighs> right um i'm just going to be faffing so i'm not going to record this i'll show you when i'm done which will probably be tomorrow i'll see you then
pretty much there, pretty much there. So this last little bit I'm going to leave um, because I need to dig out all of this section, uh, change that manhole, right, manhole or inspection chamber over and put another one for the other pipe so I can connect up over there. But I'm going to leave this here. I'm glad I've got, got it to a point where I can just leave it um, because I need to just do something else now. I've had enough of doing this. I'm going to get back on the cart lodge tomorrow. I'll do a day in there and then I'm going to pop home. I've seen a few specialists should we say um, on youtube that say that you shouldn't be using pea gravel for this or shingle and it's no good and it doesn't work but i, I just I, I just can't see any sense in it because yeah look i'll do your little test this is shingle in here i've cut a few slits at the bottom this is a glass of water or cup of water are you ready So, as he's saying it doesn't work, I don't understand. <laughs> so sod it. Remember, I've got all of my clean outs as well. One, two, three, four, five. It's burrito properly, everything's fine. I reckon it's all good. I've got a few, I've got one side of the roof combined into this run as well. And I still need to do the other one, but that will go separately. So this inspection chamber, what I've done is I've gone into solid pipe at the ends just here. This inspection chamber is super expensive, but it is one of the cheaper ones. There's only one company that I could get it through. They are pretty rubbish. It's a 250mm inspection chamber. And this bit here is 80 quid. This bit here is 35 quid. And this bit here is 150 quid. Can you believe that? <laughs> so yeah, that's the reason why I wanted to build one, but I just had to take the plunge, didn't I? Because it, it would never get done otherwise. And just filling it up, I used these. These are the like coping brick stones or capping stones capping bricks for the top of the wall the old wall anyway use that to weigh down the pipe because what i found was if you put the shingle in when the pipe wasn't weighed down it just moved about and ended up raising up and then it didn't have to fall everything set between one in 200 and one in 100 as well i reckon it's going to work it's everything runs away I don't even really need guards anymore, do I? <laughs> but yeah, um, so next time's part four. I've already fin finished filming that, but if you're enjoying it, then make sure you give us a thumbs up. Push the bell notification for the next instalment. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.